we're back. The neck has had a couple of days to cure, and uh, well, the fret ends are rather pointy still. So I'm just going to use a pair of pliers to snip the excess off. Now I'm obviously putting some pressure on the neck and the frets. I've had people totally freak out when I do this in the past, but uh, there's no point. I, I put more pressure on that fret hammering it in than I have putting it in this soft vise. Uh, and I do need my neck held nice and solid while I do this. The tool we're using is one of my own, in fact the original one of my own. Uh, it's a single cut fret file in a mahogany handle uh, that screw holds it in. Uh, the ones that we make now and sell in our shop are actually uh, uh, better designed. But uh, I like this beastie. Uh, it fits me. Now anyway, uh, this is used to uh, level the files. Ha! Level the files. File the frets level with the side of the fretboard and then angle them uh, at a sort of 45 degree angle for comfort. However, we initially need to use a standard flat file to get the, the bulk of the excess material removed. I'm using the fine edge Again, that is a single cut edge, and uh, it's very, very important to push towards the neck. If I push this way, no matter how much tang is bit into the, the fret slot and all the glue, etc., I am likely to push that fret out of the slot and mess up my, my lovely work so far. So uh, here we go. Now that I've got the fret ends roughly filed flush with the neck, I can put it in the dogs. Basically, before this point, I couldn't put it flat on the bench because there were fret ends digging into it, and uh, that would have been that would have been depressing. Okay, I am now going to do the last little bit of tidying up with uh, that tool. Although it sounds like I don't need to. Okay, which is fine. Now I'm angling the tool roughly at a 45 degree angle to the side of the neck. Now these frets are the hypoallergenic um, alloy and they're, they are harder and uh, they're not very kind on my tools. However, you can hear when I'm touching the metal. Now listen for the change in sound. Suddenly I'm not touching metal anymore, or I'm not predominantly touching metal, I'm taking away wood, and that means that my fret ends are pretty much there. Now with my guitars I do tend to round over the actual fretboard a little bit as well for comfort. It gives that sort of vintage feel. Once I've done, time to move on to the other. Now that the fret ends are filed properly, and that's a relatively comfortable neck already, it's time to move on to profiling the ends. This is a little hand bastard file, um, sorry, hand bastard cut file, 
that I have uh, modified. And again, we are selling similar tools in our uh, online shop at Crimson Guitars. Uh, adverts, adverts. Anyhow, basically what I've done is I have ground smooth the edges and rounded them over so that the file won't be digging into your fretboard. And this is used predominantly to reprofile frets after you have been leveling your frets. But the initial job is to round over the fret ends like so. Doesn't want to be rather tightly kept in that the dog's stamp. So again holding on with as many fingers as possible. Round over the end. Like so. And that is a much more comfortable fret than that. That digs into my finger. That doesn't. And uh, yes, again, these are very hard frets. And uh, it's making this process a little bit more interesting than is usually the case. So let us begin at the end. I'm using my finger here as the reference for where I am so that I don't cut into the binding too much. The final stage, and this is to uh, finish rounding over the fret ends and to also slightly round over the, uh, the binding and tidy up any slips or mishaps that you might have had while filing the frets, is to wrap a piece of fine sandpaper in this case 240 grit, around a finger, and run it up and down. And this is effectively rounding over everything, slightly polishing up the fret ends, and uh, making a more comfortable finger-friendly instrument. Lovely.